Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. This video is going to be on the top highest paying jobs in tech with no coding required. So I know a lot of you guys on this channel are interested in different roles in tech, specifically in cybersecurity, but there are definitely other roles in technology out there, especially for those of you who may be interested in going into tech, but maybe don't want to be coding every single day. So hopefully this list can shed some light on other jobs out there that can be just as rewarding and also just as highly compensated as software engineering roles. All right, number one on this list is a project manager or a PM. The average project manager makes about $88,000 per year based on averages from Glassdoor. So project management is definitely what it sounds like. Your main responsibilities and objectives are to move a project forward. And there's also a statistic out there that by 2027, employers will need 87.7 million individuals working in project management roles and that's definitely going to be a huge need not just for technical folks but also non-technical folks to try to get into technology project management is definitely more so on the business side you're really dealing with processes try to move a project forward hitting deadlines certain milestones speaking with and updating key stakeholders for the project or projects that you're working on and making sure that they're always in a loop as well as being, of course, that communication funnel between the technical side, which are typically the developers or the technical teams, and the business side or the different stakeholders or the actual users of the end product that are actually going to use the technology that the development team is building. So as a project manager, your job is really to be able to be able to have conversations with both the technical side as well as the non-technical side to make sure that a project is moving along and being able to get those key requirements that the stakeholders actually want. So of course, your job is also going to kind of revolve around the software development lifecycle or the SDLC. Most companies, I think nowadays, use Agile but there are definitely some older companies that may still be using Waterfall. Your main job is going to be going over and taking a project through all of the phases for the software development lifecycle, initiating, planning, executing, monitoring and controlling, and then closing. And then of course, with the Agile methodology, there's going to be a lot more flexibility in terms of the stories and the continuous deployment of technology compared to the typical waterfall method. And I won't give a whole lecture about the agile methodology, but I will put some figures on the screen to help you understand it. Even if you're not going into software development, it's still helpful to know the key concepts of agile, scrum, what a Kanban board is, what are story points, teacher sizing, little things like that that'll probably come up in your daily conversations anyway if you're working in tech as a PM or project manager or not. The next role on this list is a technical writer. A technical writer makes on average a salary of about $68,000 per year in the US based on numbers from Glassdoor. So this is one of the roles that has always been very interesting to me. It's definitely nice to have a technical background if you're going into technical writing, but essentially a lot of your job goes into that documentation side or exactly what it sounds like again, the technical writing that ties back to any application. A really awesome definition I found of what a technical writer actually does does is from this article which states a technical writer prepares clear concisely written documentation that communicates technical information to a target audience some examples include user manuals for software documentation guides design or engineering specifications so typically companies would expect a software engineer to also write the documentation for their applications but sometimes technical teams aren't the best at conveying certain features or functionalities to the end user or the stakeholder that may not be as technical and may not understand that tech lingo. So to put it in layman's terms, there may be a technical writer that's brought in to actually write that documentation, especially if it's going directly to a user. So this isn't internal documentation. This isn't this isn't notes for the developer. It's specifically for documentation that is written for a stakeholder or an external user that is not technical or for some specific target audience. And I really think this role is perfect for those of you who may be interested in technology, but also may enjoy writing and reading and digging into to different tech but maybe not coding it specifically. I definitely think it's one of those cross-disciplinary areas in tech where other people who may not come from a necessarily technical background can also break into tech and maybe get used to the language that's used, different software specs or requirements. And all of that can be very helpful if you're someone who does want to go into a more technical role in the future. All right, number three on this list is a business analyst who make about $77,000 per year based on average salaries from Glassdoor. 
So this is one of the jobs that I was very interested in in college myself. And while a business analyst typically isn't going to be a very technical role, it is again one of those roles that are in between the business and the technical teams. And based on this article, business analysts are responsible for improving the efficiency and impact of certain business operations. They might also be in charge of analyzing and communicating data as it relates to business relevant trends and solutions to a management team. Organizations rely heavily on business analyst evaluations and recommendations as information is provided to improve decision making processes and reconfigure business goals both internally and at a customer level. So as a business analyst, your job is really to understand the business, the past, present, and future, and try to make it so that the organization can make the best decisions possible to be able to grow, to be able to move forward. And a lot of this does have to deal with consuming data. So you may not be the one actually wrangling the data, cleaning it up, but you are someone who is going to take that data and make decisions with it and then maybe have certain hypotheses or decisions made from them and then presenting that to a management team to then be able to move forward to decide whether or not action should be taken. So business analysts are definitely a driving force in many organizations. If you're someone who is interested in the business side but also you know, wants to get close to that technical side and you also enjoy influencing decisions, it's definitely a role with a lot of responsibility. People are relying on you for your opinion on which way the business should go and it's definitely a very good role if you're interested in eventually maybe doing some kind of leadership position because this role literally takes a bunch of data and then has you make a decision on it and then present it to a management team and all of that requires excellent communication skills being able to make hard decisions and come up with different hypotheses that might work for the business and it's definitely an awesome skill set to take forward with you if you're someone who is interested in going into management or even project or program management roles all right, the next role you guys know I had to throw in here, and that is a security or an SOC analyst. A security analyst makes on average about $78,000 per year based on average US salaries from Glassdoor. So of course, a quick disclaimer, a lot of these average salaries may vary across websites from Glassdoor to ZipRecruiter to salary.com to Indeed. A lot of websites may have different salary ranges. So definitely take these numbers with a grain of salt and know that there are probably people making way more than this number, but there may also be people making less than this average. And it'll all depend on your experience, your background, your education, as well as the sector that you're going into. So I won't go too in detail for security analysts since a lot of my content on this channel is made around cybersecurity roles and SOC analysts slash security analyst roles are one that I've made many videos on. And I know it's also one that many of you guys are interested in getting into, but generally a security analyst or an SOC analyst is going to be working in a security operations center and their job is to review and manage any kind of alert, ticket, anomaly that may occur within the company and then taking that alert or information and figuring out if it's actually a security event. So a lot of your day may be spent monitoring different security dashboards. Your team may have an inbox or some kind of ticketing portal that other teams in your company or external users even submit tickets into and have you review for any kind of security concern. So a security analyst is really the front lines of, of the security program in any organization. If you're working for a company that has an internal cybersecurity team, then you'll only be managing for that company. If you're someone who's working as a consulting SOC or basically like a vendor SOC and you work for a bunch of different companies as they their SOC, then obviously that means there's a lot more programs and, and security concerns for you to review. But in my opinion, this is one of the best roles that are entry level to get into in cybersecurity because you just learn so much and you're really able to get a broad look across cybersecurity and at the different alerts that can come in or the different things that can go wrong or even getting involved in that incident response process because you're on the front lines, you get a lot more experience in that space and it'll really be helpful to you in the future if you're looking to go into somewhere that's more niche or you're just trying to climb in your career in the SOC, which is very much something people do as well. All right, the last role on this list is a data analyst who makes on average a salary of about $69,000 per year in the US based on the salaries from Glassdoor. This is also one of those very integral roles in tech that don't necessarily need a coding background, but it's also one of those nice to haves. A data analyst retrieves and gathers data, organizes it, uses it to reach meaningful conclusions to help with any business decisions that are being made in the company. Data analysts and business analysts can definitely work hand in hand, but data analysts are definitely are definitely a bit more technical than a business analyst role. Some of the things that you may be doing on a daily basis as a data analyst are producing different 
and reports around data that the business is interested in, looking for patterns or anomalies in that data, and then using that to influence any relevant business decisions, collaborating with other teams, collecting data, as well as setting up and maintaining the infrastructure that is used to collect that data. This is also a great role for those of you who may be interested in going into data engineering or even data science. I know especially for data science, there are there may be more barriers of entry to get into a data science role, especially if you don't have a master's or a PhD or some kind of higher level education. But data analyst role can really give you that feel of what it's like to be working with data day in and day out, especially if you're someone who graduated from a boot camp or graduated from a two-year or four-year university program. This is definitely be a great stepping stone role for you to break into data and then decide which way you want to go from there. And with more and more of the world coming online, there's going to be a huge excess of data that companies collect and don't even know what to do with. This is definitely a problem that I've seen many companies have. They have all this data, but they don't have, but they don't have the talent or the tools to be able to take that data and make meaningful business decisions with it. So it's definitely a great area to go into. If you're someone who likes looking for different anomalies, finding patterns, and helping the management team make different decisions about the business. All right, so that's it for this video. I know it looks like the sun is setting right now so sorry in advance for the lighting the sun just decided to set on me and it's kind of dark in here but thank you guys so much for watching if you like this video and found it helpful please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and turn on post notifications i post videos every wednesdays and sundays at 12 p.m and hopefully i'll see you guys in my next video bye